Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh wait, one sec. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I stayed at the same school, which is the University of Texas at Austin, for both my undergrad and grad degrees. And I got one person who commented on that video asking me what schools I was deciding between and to elaborate more on why I made that decision. And today I am granting that person's wish. I feel like when I was deciding on which grad school to go to, a video like this would have really helped me. And I also think it's really good that I made that video about how to choose your PhD advisor before I made this video because my PhD advisor was a huge reason why I chose to stay. But before we get into all of that, let's go over some background info. I applied to graduate schools in 2012 for starting the following year in 2013. I applied to eight schools, I'll put the list somewhere on the screen here, and I got into five of them. Stanford, UIUC, UCSD, the University of Michigan, and of course UT. At that time, I remember the school that I really wanted to go to was Berkeley, and I can't remember exactly why that was my top school, but I didn't get in, so you know, that was out of the question. The University of Michigan's offer was actually for their master's program, and I had a newer faculty member email me after I got in, and she said she wasn't on the admissions committee, but she had seen my application, and she really liked what I had said about the undergraduate research I had done, and she knew I applied for a PhD, but unfortunately it was really competitive and there weren't that many slots open. Who knows what was true, but without being admitted to the PhD program at the University of Michigan, I just really didn't even consider it. UCSD accepted me and actually invited me to their visit days, which grad schools will typically do for top candidates to one, entice them, and two, let them form connections with some of the faculty members there, perhaps get some funding. And their visit days actually overlapped with UTs. And they said if I didn't go, then their faculty members wouldn't be able to consider me for fellowships that at the time they were considering me for. And UT's program was a little bit better than UCSD's. And so I'm not even entirely sure why I applied to UCSD. Maybe just to give myself an option if I didn't get into like higher ranked schools and I still wanted to go somewhere new. But yeah, I told them I wouldn't be able to attend their visit days, and they said I could attend the following week if I wanted to, but it didn't sound like they would arrange anything for me in terms of travel or lodging. And on top of that, I think I got this decision back after I had already gotten my decisions from other schools. So it was really just at the bottom of my list, and I didn't really end up giving UCSD a lot of thought. Okay, so now I'll go on to talk about the other three schools that gave me acceptances and what their offers were. Let's start with UT, where I ended up picking. They offered me five years of support, of which the first year or the first two semesters would be a fellowship from the school, which covered tuition and gave me a monthly stipend. And the second through the fifth years, the support would be in the form of a graduate research assistantship position, or GRA, with my advisor, who I already knew and who already accepted me into his lab. And the GRA position also covers tuition and also gives a monthly stipend. Of course, this support was contingent on me staying with that advisor, maintaining a 3.5 GPA, hitting the necessary milestones to qualify for PhD candidacy, like pre-qual and qual, and basically just fulfilling my duties as a PhD student. On top of all of that, they gave me an additional scholarship for the first four years of $9,000 a year. So what this offer showed me was that they really wanted me to pick UT and stay and do my graduate studies. I mean, they offered me security and funding and having an advisor, and then they gave me an additional incentive with that four-year scholarship. So this was pretty much the best offer I think I could have gotten from a grad program. And in terms of ranking, the rankings have changed a little bit since 2012 when I applied, but I found an archived version of the US News rankings from December 2012 when I applied, and UT wasn't even a top 10 school at the time. I think it was just out of the top 10, but now it's number eight, so it is a very good school. Another thing I was considering when I was looking at schools was where my lab or my potential advisors ranked in the image and video processing space specifically. And to know that, I had to talk to other faculty members in my field. 
definitely figure out where the best research is being done in your areas of interest specifically. Because a department could be ranked really high, but they may not be doing a lot of research in the areas that interest you. Or a school could be ranked lower, but they might have the best professor doing research in the exact area that you want to research. So don't just go off the US News rankings, which are still useful and everybody still looks at those, but you can get a lot more useful information if you talk to faculty members in your specific area or adjacent areas, because they'll probably know better or have a better idea of how to rank specific research groups. I think my advisor's lab is one of the best in the country for image and video processing. And so that also just added to how enticing it was to return to UT for graduate school. Now onto the other two schools I was seriously considering, which were the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign or UIUC and Stanford. And both their electrical engineering departments were ranked higher and still are ranked higher than UT's. Let me start with UIUC. They are currently ranked fourth behind MIT, Stanford, and Berkeley. Back in 2012, they were tied for number three with Berkeley. So it was a great school back then, and it's still a great school. Their offer says, it's my pleasure to inform you that you have been granted admission to pursue graduate studies in the Department of ECE at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We are pleased to offer you a half-time teaching assistantship for the nine-month academic year, beginning with the fall of 2013 semester. And that comes with a stipend and covers tuition. They also invited me to the grad student recruitment days and they say at the end of the email, research assistantship decisions have not all been made and will not be completed until well after the visit dates because basically the visit dates, as I mentioned, give you a chance to make a connection with an advisor and potentially set up a GRA position for yourself. I did end up going to the visit days and it was an okay experience, I'd say. As it happened, the day we flew in, there was some sort of snowstorm or blizzard there. So our flight was delayed, we got there pretty late at night, and the next morning we had to be on campus for their planned program. And I remember not being very prepared for the snow. I know I didn't have the proper shoes and I just wasn't prepared for walking around so much on snow and ice. I'd say the graduate students at UIUC did seem pretty happy. That's another thing I think you should try to observe or ask directly. Like figure out whether the grad students actually like being there and whether they enjoy what they're doing. One thing that really stuck with me when I was there was they kept saying how there's not much to do around campus because it's literally surrounded by cornfields. But that was why they were able to focus so well on their work because there were just so few distractions. I don't know. I guess it could be a good thing for some people, but I wasn't sure whether that was something I was okay with or not. During the visit days, they did arrange for me to meet with one professor. I gave them a list of like five or six faculty members that I would be interested in talking to, and somehow I only ended up getting to talk to one. And I think I came away from that meeting thinking like, okay, this person could be a potential advisor for me but I didn't set up anything concrete and I didn't also feel like I had a lot of backup options. So because I didn't have a GRA position, I wanted to make sure that I had other faculty members that I could see as potential advisors. And I didn't really feel like I had that, but you know, they were giving me funding in the form of a TA position and it's not ideal, but if I didn't have some sort of research position, then it's the best I could have gotten short of getting some sort of fellowship or scholarship. Now onto the Stanford offer. Back in 2012, they were tied for the top spot on the US News rankings with MIT, and it looks like they still are. So clearly if I got into MIT or Stanford, I was going to seriously consider it. Now their offer says, you have been admitted to study toward the PhD degree starting autumn quarter of 2013 to 2014. Is that written properly? I don't know. Then they say they're in the process of assigning fellowships and they'll notify me about whether I'll get any financial aid. I didn't end up getting any, which made it difficult for me to feel comfortable accepting this offer. In the offer letter, they also gave me an initial academic advisor because I guess I didn't have a research advisor and my interests seemed to align with his research areas. I did reach out to him and I was able to find the email that I sent, but I never got a response. I also reached out to a bunch of people at Stanford. I knew a couple people there, but I cold emailed a couple faculty members and a handful of students in their research groups. Pretty much everyone, except for the person who was assigned to me to be my academic advisor, replied to me, 
and everyone is extremely helpful. I basically tell them that I was admitted to the MS PhD program. I wasn't invited to their visit days, and so I'd be very appreciative if they could give me any firsthand insight that they have into the program. I'd ask if they could share their experiences or any advice that they might have, because I'd heard that it was very difficult to find an advisor and pass the quals, and that I think the stat that I heard was like 50% of the students who entered the MS PhD program left with just their masters. I don't know how accurate that is, but I was comparing those odds to what UT was offering. And in my track at UT, the qual was not a written or oral exam. It was a proposal of research. Each track at UT had a slightly different procedure. I know of at least one track that did have an oral exam for the qual, but for me, if I had an advisor who supported my research, and if I had a direction for my research, then I was pretty much guaranteed to pass the qual and to move on to get my PhD. So at Stanford, I knew there'd be a pretty fair chance that I would get my master's, find a job at some startup or some big tech company, and that'd be it. And you know, that didn't sound that bad to me. It actually sounded pretty exciting at the time because for me, and I think a lot of young engineers have this perception of Silicon Valley too, but I thought it was like the land of opportunity. And on top of that, I knew it would just be an invaluable experience to be in a new environment, take courses from new professors, meet people from different backgrounds, just gain a new perspective on things, research, academia, industry, careers, everything. So even though Stanford didn't give me any money and they didn't even really give me the impression that they wanted me, I was still so drawn to this opportunity to be there. And everyone at Stanford that I was able to talk to also told me really wonderful things about their experiences. They gave me advice on how to find an advisor, how to start doing research with different advisors, when to prepare for the quals, ways to get ahead or set yourself up for the best chance of success before you even get to Stanford. They also gave me names of other faculty members that they thought I might want to reach out to, why they think some students leave with their masters or why some don't pass their quals. I also found out which professors might have openings in their labs and which might not. Like, you guys, I got all the information I could have wanted. And for the most part, it all made me want to go to Stanford even more. But I think that'll be the case with most schools. Like, if you talk to the people at those schools, it will most likely make you want to go there more. Also, I was never the best student. Like, when I was applying to colleges, I never got into the best schools. I didn't get into Ivy Leagues. I never got internships at the hottest companies when I was an undergrad. So for me to get into Stanford made me feel like maybe this is the opportunity to really push me into achieving something that, I don't know, I've never really had the chance to try before. I think the main thing that gave me reservations about picking Stanford was the fact that the professor I was really interested in working with, he actually came to UT to visit and I got to chat with him about opportunities to join his group. And he told me that he probably was going to be taking on more administrative duties. So he couldn't guarantee that he would have any openings or be taking on any new students anytime soon. And yes, I know I could have worked with someone else. There were a couple other faculty members doing research that I thought sounded interesting, but I kind of felt like if I picked Stanford, I wouldn't really be putting myself in the best situation to succeed. So I went back and forth on this a lot. As much as I liked UIUC and was honored to have gotten an offer, I was really just deciding between Stanford and UT. And for a period of time, I was going back and forth like multiple times a day. Like I'd tell myself, okay, you're going to UT. And I would sit with that decision. And then I would start second guessing myself and regretting that I didn't pick Stanford. And then I would tell myself, okay, you're going to Stanford. And I'd sit with it again and again, I'd start second guessing myself and feeling like I should pick UT. And I did this over and over again. And in the end, I felt like there would probably be some regret with any decision that I made, but I also knew that I would be fine and that my career would be fine regardless of where I went. And ultimately, I thought that the regret that I would feel for passing up the opportunity to work with my advisor at UT would be far worse than the regret that I would feel for passing up the opportunity to go to Stanford and be in the Bay Area and to be like able to say that I went to Stanford. Prestige was never really that important to me, but I think it was important to like 
everybody else that I was talking to. So maybe that also made it hard for me to make a decision on where to go. But like I said in that video about how to find your PhD advisor, your relationship with your advisor is extremely important. And you know, hundreds of students get into Stanford's EE grad program every year. But my advisor at UT only accepts like one or two people into his lab every year. So it really came down to that. I had the opportunity to work with a really great advisor, go to a really good school, not have to worry about financial support, and to have what felt like a department behind me that really thought I could succeed. I hope me going over my offers and my thought process on how I decided where to go for grad school was helpful to anyone who's in this position or who will be in this position this coming spring. Feel free to comment below if anything I said was unclear or if you're in a similar situation and something I said was particularly helpful. I'd love to know what goes through other people's minds when they're trying to make such a life altering decision. Thanks for watching this video and good luck to anyone who's preparing to go to graduate school. Oh boy.